Hey guys, how you doing? So I got an interesting email, but I think most people will find interesting. So it's a dude who is working at a company and he's a back-end Java engineer. So he says, I've been put on a performance improvement plan, notorious in this field for being a way to fire someone or make them quit after my declining performance from last quarter. So the framing of this is that, oh, his skill as a Java developer has dropped. That is not likely. I don't think this is a problem of technical skill. Let me get into it. So he continues, I have a lot of issues with my job. I have checked out, he's checked out, you know, psychologically, and I feel defeatist because of how my tech lead treats me and our clashing communication styles. I have a four-year computer science degree because I wanted to get a degree that would pay for itself. Computer science, although it's not required, is one of the few degrees out there, one of that small elite 10 or 20% of degrees out there that actually have some value. Although, as I pointed out, as Google pointed out, as Apple pointed out, as IBM pointed out, degrees for computer development are not required these days and they're losing their value. But anyway, that's another story. I doubt that software engineering is my calling, but I hold out, I hold out hope that it's because I've been working at the wrong place, places or in the wrong domains. I've also heard that competence leads to confidence. This is true. Maybe I just need to fill knowledge gaps and build my own, more things on my own. So um, he says, long term, I want to be able to live off investments and pour myself into a thing I'm passionate about, like drawing or painting, or learning another valuable skill to service businesses or run my own. What would you suggest? So. A few things I want to unpack here. Number one, he says, uh, going back to that key line, I think that key paragraph, I have a lot of issues with my job. I have checked out and feel defeatist because of how my tech lead treats me and our clashing communication styles. Therein lies, I think, the answer to this uh, dilemma here. I think his major problem is that the clashing of the personalities, it's huge, it's a huge factor. He was hired, he doesn't say how long he's been there. Uh, no, he doesn't say how long he's been there, so I assume he's been there a little while. The big issue that he has is not technical, I don't think. I think it's the clashing and the communication with the tech lead. Because if you've got your computer science degree, you're capable, you're competent, you know what you, you, you have enough brain power to learn how to be a professional developer. Let me make this clear. Most people come out of computer science, come out of universities, they don't have job ready skills. They just shown that they have the ability to be persistent and get, you know, get the work done. You typically learn how to code professionally while on the job. That's the key. His major problem is the communication, the classic, the clashing communication styles with his tech lead. And that's why he's dejected. That's why it's all going downhill. And that's why they put him into a performance improvement plan. As I pointed out, recruiters will tell you the number two thing they look for in recruits is their communication abilities, their communication skills, their soft skills, be able to get along with everybody else. It's very important. That's why I put together the Lizard Wizard course. You can buy it individually, but I put together that course and other training that's available in my mentoring program. Yes, it's a shameless plug. One of the reasons I put that into my mentoring program, which is my boot camp, is my own style of boot camp, very different from any other boot camp, because I realized that the biggest problem people have is not technical skills. The biggest problem people have is communication skills, psychological training, all this kind of stuff too. Uh, it makes your life much easier once you get that wrapped up. So yeah, my solution for you is do the Lizard Wizard training. That will help you out. With that aside, uh, you want to start applying to new jobs like crazy. And if you want to do your own thing, you're, you're a developer. You know Java back end? So you want to learn some front end so you can do full stack. That's where the money is. And I would say get into freelance because freelance will allow you to pick and choose your clients in time, be able to set your own work schedule, uh, and it will give you that freedom to be able to pursue 
any other things you might be passionate about. That's why I went into freelance, by the way. It gave me uh, a runway financially, and also I learned a lot by becoming a freelancer. Um, it gave me that runway to be able to look at developing my own software, my own businesses, and gives you that flexibility. So that would be my goal. So the good thing is that this dude here has a Java background. So for him to piv pivot into web development and doing full stack and get into freelance will be, won't be so difficult. Somebody told me a long time ago, highly successful executive, hated his job, hated it so much that he left a very high paying job. He was in like the top 3% of earners in, 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 uh, in the country. And he said, that's it, I hate my job. And he quit and he started delivering newspapers while jogging because he liked the job. I tell you, he rather deliver newspapers and make a fraction, a tiny fraction of what he used to make than stay as an executive that was high paid. Better to spend a little bit more time figuring out what you like to do and doing what you like than being stuck in a job you hate that's death. He's got his degree, but most importantly, he's got his coding skills, which opens up a huge range of possibilities which you can do. You know, with coding skills, and you get into web development, you start freelancing, you can express your artistic flair, if you will, your artistic inclinations in the web space. That's one of the reasons I, that's one of the reasons I teach the web is because it allows for a great amount of flexibility in terms of the style of coding and programming that you do. The web allows you to do hardcore data oriented type of coding. You can get into AI with it. You can get into visual type of development where you can express the drawing and uh, artistic, uh, art your artistic expression can be, uh, can be expressed. Anyway, there you go, I hope that helps. I hope that helps. So this guy's main issue, I don't believe is his coding skills. I think it's much more about his clash of communications and that's a big part of it. And sometimes there's no way around this. Some people just don't get along. They could both be right or they could both be wrong. What are you gonna do? So I would start applying for other jobs right away. Uh, be sure when you take any job, when you start making money, you gotta save your FU money so you don't feel trapped. That's just something I've been teaching for years and years and years. FU money is money that you have that will cover at least six months of expenses. If the job is going good, at least six months, if you find that you're starting to get tired of your job, you better increase that to one year, uh, especially given the, uh, the economic circumstances now, we don't know what's gonna happen. So you wanna increase, you wanna have all your expenses covered. Trust me, when you have six months to a year of cash on hand, uh, you feel great. In terms of, uh, and it gives you a lot of choice and you don't feel pressure to work. So he says, I want to be able to live off of investments and pour myself into things I'm passionate about. Well, yeah, so you gotta start saving like crazy. One of the things I tell people is uh, don't do what the financial advisors say. They say you should save 10, 15% per year. I say that's way too little, way too little. You should be saving, in my opinion, at least 25, 30% per year. For a lot of people, that's a stretch. You're gonna have to work towards it. Uh, see, what happens when people start, when they up their skills, that will up your income, right? More skills, the more you learn, the more you earn. So you up your skills, keep upping your skills, keep upping your skills. You're, you will increase your income as a result of that. But then what they do is they up their lifestyles in accordance to their earnings. If you're smart about it, when you up your skills and then your income comes up afterwards, don't up your lifestyle. Let's keep your lifestyle here so you can keep earning more and more and more and more. If you start being able to save 25, 30% of your income, you'll see quickly you start building up savings. Now, what I did is even when I was into my passive income track, I would still save 50, some years, 80% of my income. I lived a pretty frugal lifestyle and I wasn't making buckets of cash. So it's something that's achievable. But I lived a very frugal lifestyle. You know, I lived in a, you know, a, a nice apartment. Uh, it was like, you know, 550 square feet. I didn't care. It was a great apartment, great location. I lived in there for years and years, well, years and years, five, six years more than I really needed to. 
uh, because I was comfortable with it and I was saving uh, a lot of money and I quickly built up a savings that normal people would take you know, much longer than me, like 10, 15 years. I was able to do it in a few years. And that is the ultimate uh, safety and choice giver. Having cash on hand, keeping your expenses low, nothing better you can do for yourself in terms of your mental health, your psychological health, and your physical health even. All right, I hope you found this video useful. I'm Steph, some people call me Uncle Steph. I mentor people in professional coding, the professional development. I have a program, you can check it out at UncleSteph.com. What I teach is based on my personal experience. No academic teaching here. And uh, yeah, that's why people learn quickly.